Adobe Continue Results class um, Women's uh, Guide to Practical Halacha. And we start with um, Sefer Shemiraz Halashon. <clears throat> and today's topic is a public appeal. And it says, um, Through the kindness of Hashem, I have now attained the age of the strength, the a um, the eighties, see the nineteen twenty-five. So, okay, so let's see what does it mean. Um, and virtually my entire life, I have not derived any uh, that diverted my mind from pondering the matters of the speech. So it's Hafiz Chaim talking. So he's in eighties, right? Um, and all his life, it's very very interesting, right? And virtually all my uh, my entire life, I have not derived my that diverted my mind from the pounder in the matters of the speech, <clears throat> which involved numerous positive negative commandments. To our misfortune, many among the multitudes have no regard whatsoever for the matter of Mishmiras Halashon. To their minds, it is nothing more than a matter of custom and uh, propriety for those who wish to be zealous in it. So, as he says clearly in his time, in our time, many people think it's only if you want to be pious, if you want to be tzaddik, then you adhere yourself to this uh, was Otherwise, uh, not so much, which is not true. I direct my words to those who have uh, some understanding of the Torah precepts. People who, whose hearts uh, would um, undoubtedly be distressed for months on end where they mistakenly eat meat um, that is unkosher. It is rare that these same people would feel such a distress upon realizing that they have accepted as a fact malicious talk about certain individual, thereby, transg thereby transgressing the Torah prohibition against believing Lo and Hara. The reason for this uh, apparent contradiction is that this prohibition is not taken seriously by the multitude. So it's very interesting. Hafiz Haim says, so he's not t talking to ignorant people. He's not talking about uh, to Epicorsin that uh, there is nobody to talk to. Right? So he's uh, talking to people who know, right, and who value the Torah. And those people, if they uh, eat um, not kosher meat, for example, right, they would feel uh, bad for um, uh, for for a month. Right, but uh, speaking Loshan Hara would believe in them. Forget about speaking, even believe in Loshan Hara, they would not feel bad uh, uh, so much. Right, so that's why, why, why is it? the reason is that people do not take it seriously. That's the only reason <clears throat> they do not take seriously the prohibition of Loshan Hara, even though it's more serious than uh, uh, than uh, eating non kosher meat. As you said, it's one of the group of people that Shina is not going to come to that place. If somebody eat not kosher meat, especially unknowingly, okay, that's not such a big. Uh, I mean, it is a, it is an issue, it is a sin, but not nothing compare comparing to Loshan Hara. Rambam understand Ramban Ramban understand the commandment to recall the episode of Miriam affliction, Dvarim twenty four nine as an obligation to admonish one's children uh, <clears throat> to transmit, uh, to, transmit the fu to future generations how exceedingly shameful the sin is. So one, one of uh, the several things that, that we must remember every day, right? And um, one of the things is what Hashem did to Miriam. Right? Uh, Okay, so I mean, what what did he do? He punished her for uh, with tzaras, with uh, skin affliction, for um, <clears throat> for speaking bad about Moshe. In this way, the prohibition against speaking loshon hara will be fluent uh, uh, fluent upon their lips, and then you start with children. But this thing is great and brings um, with many bad things. Uh, and brings with with it and for for this thing is great and bring with it the many bad things, and um, and the people tend to transgress it regularly. Moreover, inspiring others uh, regarding the seriousness of this sin goes a long way toward um, ensuring that one will himself refrain from speaking the forbidden. 
It's uh, from the letter of Hofitz Chaim, ER 5686, meaning it's 1926. So, and, and when we discuss it with others, meaning halachas, so it help, uh, helps us to remember and to practice also. Okay, we start here. Okay, no problem. So we continue. So our big topic is nitalasya uh, daim, uh, right? So meaning now uh, washing of the hands. And okay, we, we didn't finish because it was uh, a lot. So let's continue. So we continue washing wet hands. So let's see, right? The Paskin discuss whether one can wash one's hands if they are slightly wet beforehand. The question um, um, revolves around whether the water on the hand is already tame. Tame means impure, so we're going to explain. According to the strict halacha, one need not be concerned with the hands if the hands are wet. However, many are particular if their hands should be completely dry uh, before they wash. One who is particular, um, one one who is particular, should be sure that the um, that the handle of the washing cup is not wet, is not wet before picking it up. <clears throat> so let's uh, let's try to understand what it says here. So as uh, as we know, water is one of the seven liquids that transmit impurity, right? So some people are uh, very particular. Right in in what uh, that uh, make sure that when they do nitalasia dime, it's only when their hands are completely um, completely dry. Meaning what? If they're wet, they can transmit impurity to the vessels, to 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 the water, to other things, right? Which is the problem. Um, so so what? What, what do they do, for example, if, if they want to wash uh, their hands with the soap, right? So they would wash, uh, before before doing it last day, they would wash with the soap, right? Then dry in the towel and then wash with a cup. It's one, one scenario. Second scenario, a second issue, right? If for those who are particular, for example, if you're using uh, the same cup or when uh, several people would, uh, um, with, would wash one after another. So these people would take uh, like um, maybe tape, uh, paper, a paper napkin, or they would uh, uh, take a towel and hold uh, the handles of the cup with a towel in order not to touch uh, the wet handles. Is it uh, really necessary? I mean, if somebody wants to adhere to the strict uh, practice, yeah, there is, uh, that's what they should do. Otherwise, uh, we are lenient about it. So we just take uh, the, 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 the cup, even somebody just washed, and you continue washing because um, when, when you wash twice, right, so, so we're, we're talking about, let's say, talk, uh, we're talking about uh, washing before the bread. So even though you, you wash once, right, well, you, you remove this impurity, right, and even something is left, uh, still left there, so you wash twice. It should remove all of the impurities. But some people, they try to do like, uh, adhere to the strict uh, laws of halacha, which is not necessary, but as he said, even women, some women, they want to go stricter opinion, no problem. <clears throat> so next, uh, next, uh, next topic is washing without chalitza. I'm sorry, chatzitza, I'm sorry. In the previous class we said we had uh, chalitza. Uh, it's chatzitza is the separation. The word, uh, the word chatzitza means the intervention um, between uh, the two items. One may not have any chatzitza on one's hands when washing for bread. Only item that one is particular to remove at some later point is considered chatzitza. So we're going to explain. One must remove the ring from her finger before washing. This is true even if the ring is uh, loose since um, uh, we, we're unclear as to how loose it must be for the water to, to flow around it. If a particular individual always keeps her ring, even while performing work such as kneading dough, <laughs> which will adhere to the ring, 
then the ring are considered to be secondary to your hands and need not to be removed. So let's stop here and try to understand. So when uh, when we wash our hands for bread, <coughs> right? So we we, uh, we must ensure that the water goes everywhere. So all of the um, like everywhere. Like uh, so, if uh, if she has a ring, so meaning that the, this uh, I don't know what what finger she she wears here. Her ring. So we. We can sort that the water is not going to reach under the ring, and even if the, if the ring is loose, so it can go back and forth, right? So we still we still do not know how loose it must be, so the water uh, water in such a like short period of time. So as we said, you just pour. It's not it's not she, like she she put the, the 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 hand under the water. If she puts the hand there, the hand under the water keeps there for I don't know ten seconds. Okay, maybe if the the ring is loose. I would say, yeah, but most probably the water went there, like between the ring and the finger. But just from pouring fast, most likely not. So we say what? So let her remove the ring because, um, right? But let So the water should go everywhere. But there is a condition. It's very interesting. So some, some, uh, some, some people, when uh, women, when they wear a ring for a long time, it's got like stuck <laughs> and she, she cannot remove it. So if, if she cannot remove it completely, so the, there is no problem whatsoever. I mean, what, what, what are you going to do? And the thing is, uh, if, uh, so we said, if she does not care about the ring, get, getting dirty or getting scratched or getting, I don't know, right? So it's, it, it is secondary to, to the hand. So what is, the, what is the test? If she would uh, uh, perform some, some I don't know, like, uh, uh, some dirty jobs like I don't know, wash uh, or some like I don't know, wash a baby right uh, right the, the, uh, changing the diapers and when everything is going out right so I mean if she does not care about soil soil and the ring so the, so the, the ring for sure it's a secondary but if she would uh, or the the, the 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 another example that they give is a is a door so if you if she's going to to, to mix dough with that, let, let's say she in the olden days, right? They didn't have these uh, uh, machines that that, that they, they, the mixers they're going to, to to mix the dough, right? So they would do it manually. So if she would do it manually with the ring, so all of this ring like would be like uh, full of dough, right? And to 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 remove the dough, especially if, if she has a stone in there, it's mission impossible. I mean, it's possible, but it's very very like um, difficult. And for sure, it can ruin the ring. So she would uh, would then in those situation she would uh, remove the ring. Meaning what? That ring is not secondary. It's very important. So if it's very important in those situations, and she tried to to keep it clean, right? Um, so in this case also she must remove the ring. Okay. Continue. Many times woman will take off her ring before washing. Okay. But is she hesitant to place them down on a counter. Um, or a ledge in front of him. There is a risk that the ring uh, will be lost, stolen or forgotten. The most convenient option is to put the ring in, in her mouth and hold uh, them between her teeth. Although this is certainly permitted, it is preferable that one remove the ring from her mouth before reciting bracha. Even uh, if the pronunciation will not be affected, if she keeps the ring uh, between her teeth. This is based on a pasuk in um, uh, where it says, Yemalei pi tehila secha. My mouth should be filled with your praise. This is true of all brachas. The mouth should be empty of anything beside the praise of Hashem. Let's stop here and understand. So some women have this uh, very expensive ring with a stone, a right? diamond or whatever stone is it, and she's afraid. Let's say she's uh, she's uh, she's somebody else's house. There are many many people. She does not know these people, and even if she does, I mean, uh, don't tempt anybody like uh, with a very expensive ring. Don't tempt, right? We don't do that. And so if she would uh, live on a counter, she might forget, right? Uh, if she like I don't know whatever. So so she she's afraid to forget. 
to lose it or somebody's going to steal it. So technically, like while, while she's uh, washing her hands, she can put uh, this ring in, in into her mouth because uh, she, I mean, there, there is no bracha yet. She just, uh, she, she does the action. And after she, after the, she finishes, yeah, so she takes the, 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 what is it, the, drink from from your mouth and say the blessing there is no problem and how do we know that uh, your mouth uh, must be empty right so it says in um, Tehillim I think it's Tehillim yeah Tehillim um, what is it uh, it's 70 it's 71 8 right so it says my mouth should be filled with your praise praise what, what, what does it mean so when we say the blessing so our mouth should be free so meaning what that uh, uh, before, like for, before saying the blessing, you have to swallow the, the saliva. If you have some other food, for example, you you need to, to say two blessings. For example, you you eating uh, what you eating you potato and chicken, right? So on potato you say one blessing, on chicken you need to say uh, second blessing. So make sure that you swallow the potato, like your your mouth is free, and then you say a blessing on the chicken. So say. Same is here. So even though she, technically she can say uh, the blessing normally, right? When uh, when she has this uh, ring in her mouth, but I will say just say remove it and then say the blessing. Continue. Um, the topic of uh, hatzitza is very relevant to the bandages hmm. on the hand or finger. If one has a wound on her hand and uh, removing the bandage will not cause a considerable harm, it must be removed before, uh, before washing. However, if a person will suffer great pain or discomfort, if it is removed, it need not to be removed. Likewise, since one's doctor says that uh, there is a risk of infection if the wound is exposed, then one may wash uh, while wearing the bandage. Also, if the bandage will be on the on for an extended period of time and will definitely not be removed during the meal, it is not considered chasitza. So that's a, a very common situation, right? So people cut, cut themselves, they have bandages. And bandage is also something that prevents the water go, um going under and uh, have a contact with the, with the skin. That's uh, what definition of chatzitsa, some like separation. Uh, what, no, no, they, they say in intervention, in, intervention. Okay, separation, intervention, doesn't matter. Okay, so so we said if uh, if it's possible to, to remove, well, let's say maybe the, the wound is healed already, like uh, there, there is no problem, right? So she can remove, no problem. But if it's not, if it's fresh wound, let's say she, she put ointment there, or, uh, right? So she wants to keep it there for extended period of time. No, there is no problem. So what is extended period of time? Maybe and, until uh, until it uh, it's going to come out, uh, come off by, by itself. I don't know, maybe in one day, two days, I don't know. Depends on, on the bandage. So technically we can keep the bandage uh, when... Uh, um, when we're washing washing our, our hands and just logically if you if you if you if we think logically even though this uh, this part of my finger right it's uh, uh, was not washed but it's not going to touch the bread so even let's say that this part of the finger that is under the bandage is impure it is impure but it's never going to touch my um, my piece of bread because I have uh, have on top uh, this bandage. So there is no problem. Okay. Uh, whenever a person washes uh, only one hand, because there is a bandage or a cast on another hand, one um, that must be kept dry, the bracha al nitalase daim is recited as usual, even though it is um, uh, formulate, uh, formulated in plural. That's very interesting addition, right? So. Um, let's say, God, God forbid, uh, there is a serious wound, right, on uh, on, on one of the hands, it's like a 
hand was pierced or something whatever so like a serious dressing on, on that on that hand so she is not going to eat or he's not going to eat with that hand at all or it was broken right it has cast so even though right you you're not going to wash that hand you you don't want to touch uh right you don't want to pour water you don't want to touch food with that hand because maybe if you didn't wash it for some time maybe it's a bit dirty right for sure so anyway when we say the blessing, you, you will say blessing correctly. Correctly meaning in plural. So, meaning in plural, meaning hands. Okay. We don't change the blessing. Continue. Nail polish is not considered chatzitza on, uh, on a woman's nails. Because the polish is considered secondary to her hand. Since it is there for, to beautify her. Even if it is uh, cheap, most women do not mind leaving uh, the house that way, leaving the house that way, uh, and it would therefore be considered not be considered chatzitza, and uh, in, in regard to halachas nitlasedaim. So we're talking about now only just to remind nitlasedaim washing uh, of the hands. It's not uh, going to the mikveh. Going to the mikveh different story. Okay, so. She, here we say if she has a nail polish, no problem. It's not uh, it's not chatzitza, it's secondary to the nails, no problem. Okay. Uh, any questions on what we said? Okay. Next uh, next part it's same same subject. Well, uh, washing a second time. Even after one has washed her hands, uh, if the hands are still wet, they're still able to co contract tumor from unclean hands. Therefore, one must be careful not to touch the hands of, of, of another individual who has not washed uh, for, uh, for nitalacidine. If one has done so, she must um, dry her hands and wash again. Mm, this is the case only if your hands were still wet. However, if your hands um, are, um, if she already had the set bracha and dry her hands, if she uh, realized that she touched someone's unclean hands while her hands uh, uh, were still wet, the bracha is not uh, repeated after the washing second time. So let's uh, let's try to understand. So this uh, spiritual impurity, uh, is passed only through through the liquid. So if uh, um, my hands are uh, spiritually impure, right, and somebody else uh, and somebody else is clean, so I, if if our uh, our hands are uh, dry, then there is no problem. This this impurity is not going to pass. Specifically, this impurity, right? But if uh, if some one one of us uh, our hands are uh, wet. So that's right, wet enough to. Um, so the the definition of the wet. So if, uh, for, for example, I, I I don't know if my my uh, my uh, my finger is wet. So if I no, if my hand is wet, right? So I'm I'm going to touch my my hand with uh, with uh, my finger with another one with dry, and try to put it uh, on somewhere else and see if if it's actually transfer the the moisture. So if it's uh, if that uh, third place second place. Is wet, then uh, then this hand is wet. Otherwise, it's not considered halachically wet, and the, there is no problem, right? So here he's talking about situation when uh, uh, when your hands are wet and she touched somebody. So the, the, the way we say she, but uh, the same halachas for for men. It's exactly the same, right? But uh, but she's uh, touched somebody's uh, hands, which uh, of the of the person who did not clean uh, wash wash their hands. So I, I would say child, her son came over and she she touched. There is no problem, right? I mean, it's it's not there is no problem. There is situation. Um. So in this case, since her hands became uh, again impure, right after after touching somebody else's hands. Even though they were dried, her hands were wet, 
and the other person uh, hands was dry right in this situation so she must uh, uh, wash her hands again to purify them but no blessing this time is no blessing continue many times a person's hands will become tomato during bread a bread uh, meal this can happen if one touches the cover part of the body or simply by using the bathroom many don't realize that if they want to continue to eat they must wash their hands again with a cup um, consistent with uh, consistent with regular nitalasya diet although there is there is an opinion in the poskim that braha al nitalasya diet is repeated in this case the custom is to follow the opinion not to recite braha again one second um again after washing uh, washing again one should uh, preferably eat piece of bread um, as a, as the first food so let's try to understand um, so we're trying to keep our hands pure right that would during the whole uh, the complete meal but if a person make the, this uh, her hands impure so she must wash again so what what does it mean so much wash again meaning uh, what, like she look i i, I want to talk about men it's easy right so if if i i scratch myself a shoulder I, I scratch my shoulder that's it so it's a part of the body that's usually covered i have to go wash my my hands so as uh even though there is a piece Teshuva said uh, say blessing we go by mishnah Bruna, so he go he said uh, uh not not necessarily so the bottom line we do not uh, we do not make blessing on uh, on uh, washing of the hands even though you have to wash them but without blessing or uh, for example i want to uh, uh, tie tie my shoelace my, my, my shoelace uh, got undone so i tie my shoelace i have to wash my hands in, in order to continue eating go ahead that's uh skin to skin scratching right correct it's skin to skin. No, it's only covered part of the skin. Covered. So if if I scratch my my forehead, there is no problem. Or, or if, if 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 those are only like places when when you have impurities. So impurity if if somebody picked in his nose or in his ears, right? Or or touch the uh, the skin, uh, like covered part of. Of the of the body, the right. So we we presume that the, there is a sweat, and sweat has this impurity. You understand? So if, or or man kind of like uh, uh, touches himself on under the keeper. It's also uh, it, it is also part uh, part of the of the body that usually covered. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so yeah, we finish uh, with the last time. Oh, and of course, okay, let, let me go back a little. So of course, and after the bathroom. So after after the bathroom, uh, we have to wash our hands. And um, as, a, as a separate washing, as, as we said, so like one washing is for uh, for the bathroom and another washing is a uh, uh, dime for before eating bread but of course you, you don't say any blessing uh, on, uh, on uh, washing of the hands before eating bread because you already did so even though according to some opinions they as, as we mentioned they say you have to say the blessing even in, in a bit in, even in the middle of the meal that uh, we, we allow to go by linear opinion and don't say the blessing just wash your hands okay any questions before we continue Okay, no problem. So next topic. Next, next topic is a man. Okay. And the subtopic is a man said in vain. One may not answer a man to any bracha that is said in vain. Since the saying a man shows that one is agreed with uh, what just said. Showing uh, concurrence with the improper bracha is uh, forbidden. So somebody said uh, unnecessary blessing. 
um, what would be a necessary blessing. So, if, for example, in, in this scenario that, that we just uh, discussed, um, that um, that she washed her hands, and then uh, and w then while, while the hands were wet. She touched somebody else's hands, uh, a person who did not wash here. So now we said she has to dry her hands and rewash it without the blessing. If she said the blessing, it, it's going to be blessing in vain. So even though she said the blessing in vain, it's her problem, right? But we are not allowed to answer a man. Okay. So be, why? Why? Be, because uh, when... Uh, when we say amen, we, we, we say that uh, um, that uh, Hashem is going to fulfill this, this blessing in some sense. Right? That, that He is capable of uh, fulfilling anything. So, and it's not true because the, this blessing was in way, it was a necessary blessing. Okay. So continue. Amen for children's brachas. Right? The children practice. Mm -hmm. Uh, some poski maintain that one should not answer a man to a bracha that is made by a child under the six years old. For they have no concept that they are thanking Hashem for the food they are eating. According to this poski, a mother makes a bracha with a child if, uh, if he uh, slash she is about to eat. If the child is over six, she should uh, say a man. If the child is under six, she should not. Bracha made by a child over six requires a man from those who hear it. For the hinoch of the child under the six age, some say main or amei in such a way that the child does not realize the mother is not uh, has not said complete amen. So that's very interesting. So let's try to understand. So we're talking about children. So un under the six, uh, I mean, uh, there is difference. Uh, um, all, all children are different. Some, some of them are very mature and then un understand what's going on when they're five years old. So, okay, it depends on the child, but average uh, age, they say six. So under six, they do not understand that they think in Hashem. I mean, in general, they do, but uh, not in all of the details. So they say um, if above six, like... On average, the children understand what's going on, and you 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 obligated uh, to turn amen to their blessing, so they I mean uh, to encourage them, right? And un, under th uh, under six, it's it's very interesting. So if if you don't answer amen, so these little little guys and girls they're going to get so offended. So you you don't want to start with them. If you don't answer something, they're going to get get upset right so we, we must answer something so the author, author say uh, to two two solutions so a main so but they, they they should not understand what it is that you you're missing some letters right or a may something like say quicker so they they would be happy otherwise <laughs> um, otherwise it would be yeah it's, it would be disaster so Somebody followed the, 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 that opinion, and I, I said, you, you, you cannot, even though it, like, he has a girl, I think it, she was like uh, three and a half, four, four years at that time, and then he said, no, but I cannot say, I mean, I said, forget it. You must say like this, like something, so she, she would be happy and continue doing it, otherwise she would stop. And he did not, and uh, it took them some time to convince her to start, uh, start blessing again, uh, start saying blessing again. Not a good idea. So, as we said, we are allowed, but uh, change a little. Uh, continue. Next one is a snatched or orphan amen. Hazal teach that one is forbidden to say um, amen uh, hatufa, a snatched amen. This means she may not say an amen until the bracha is completely finished. So, uh, <laughs> This uh, this is very like um, um, like common when uh, for for example in a in a synagogue when when Hazan is singing right and say say oh man like something like this uh, so until he say, he finished we're not allowed to say 
or and until the, some somebody finishes the um, the blessing. So in some shuls or in some places, some people uh, speak in a very low tone of voice, and by by your estimate, uh, the the person should have uh, finished the blessing. So if you if you're not sure, do not answer. If you're not if you did not hear what that person said, do not answer. Right? If, because why? Because you if you answer earlier then the person finishes is going to be snatched away and in, in vain also don't do that continue this is oh here his exp explanation this is especially relevant when answering the men to a hazan in a synagogue exactly they, they start singing the the last uh, the last stanza that's an issue frequently on shabbos on yom tov the hazan will end bracha with a tune that uh, end elongates the last words the congregation must be careful to wait to say amen until the bracha is finished. So, I mean, if you if you pay attention, many people are not careful. They they say early and he continue like early meaning even split second early. It's still it's still uh, before he finishes. But the final words of bracha of via vimro amen right in Kaddish, right? then amen may be answered before. The words completely finish. Vayimru, so uh, Vayimru, and let us say, and you can say, uh, receive Amen. Okay. Hazal, um, Hazal further state that one is forbidden to say an Amen, um, Yasama, the orf uh, orphan Amen, which means that um, either she answered Amen too late. More than three seconds after the bracha was completed, or she does not know which bracha or was just recited. So the second issue with amen is orphan amen. We said that it's too late, so we're what is late? So we, we have this um, um, rule that uh, like a speech. What is, what is the speech? We say shalom alechem rebi. Right, Shalom Alechem Rebbe, and some, some say Shalom Alechem Rebbe Amori. So it's like two, two and a half, three seconds the, 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 it takes to say this, uh, this statement. So if, if somebody said uh, blessing, so you have this, of course you have to answer as soon as possible, but, uh, but maximum three seconds. So if somebody said, uh, like, I don't, I don't know, some, somebody was talking to somebody, right, and then that, that person decided to finish the sentence before answering uh, somebody's blessing that, that that's he or she heard. So that's, uh, it's going to be orphan domain. Big issue. Right? Or this orphan domain, if uh, or she or he does not know what blessing uh, they answer into. That's also a problem. So you you agree that Hashem is going to fulfill, but uh, what you agree to, you have it's like a, right. That's uh, that that's an issue. May, maybe the, the, it was not a blessing. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it was something else. Continue. It is not necessary for one to hear any words of the bracha as long as she knows uh, which bracha is said. Uh, she may answer a man. So when somebody is is uh, is washing the the hands, for example, right? In the last day, and people are, are talking around the table, but uh, but but you un understood by uh, that that, that uh, somebody finished blessing. Yeah, you you understand what what, what exactly they saying? Yeah, you can answer amen. Surely, if she hears the last words of the bracha, amen may be said. So she knows what the blessing, and maybe like some people say say start uh, saying in undertone and then. The ending a little uh, louder. Okay, so there is no problem. You know what uh, what the bracha is being made, and you heard uh, the, the last two words. No problem. As long as she can uh, deduce uh, which bracha was just recited. Okay, so meaning uh, just even logically deduce it, it, even logically. Okay. Any questions on what we said? Okay. Oh. Very interesting. <laughs> Amen on the bracha is heard via technology. <laughs> there is a considerable discussion in the Paskim about halacha in regard to answering men to a bracha heard over the telephone. Many feel that although one is permitted to answer a man, there is no obligation to respond uh, as there is an, an, uh, as, um, as in the 
and in person situation. The same is true regarding hearing bracha on a live radio. Okay. Um, if one hears a bracha over the microphone, it depends. If one would not have been able to hear the bracha, if not for the microphone, she is not obligated to answer amen, although she is permitted to do so. Hearing the bracha from a recording does not warrant a main since no bracha was recited at the time one is hearing the recording. Okay, so let's stop here and try to understand. So technology, so... One second. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand where, where he's getting his sources. Um, so technically when, when we hear something on a, on a telephone, right, it's not, it's not actually the, the person's voice. Right, so how how the telephone work? It take the, the your your voice converts into into digital format, sends uh, to to another side, right? And takes time, of course. And then on another side, it, it's actually converts it into the voice again, and uh, and um, and you hear uh, the the voice of the person. So is it the same voice? No, it's it's not that you you don't hear the voice. You you have uh, you. You hear what um, this conversion of the of the voice, right? So meaning what? So for for example, you, you heard somebody you you were, you you've been speaking to somebody on, on the phone for a long time and never never saw the person, let's say, and then you like I don't know, like uh, maybe be, uh, be between one one company and another company, right? Uh, they, you you doing business, you always speak on the phone, but you never saw the person. Now you met in person, and uh, the person starts speaking, and you cannot recognize their voice. Why? Because uh, even with our beautiful technology, so the voice uh, still uh, corrupts a little, right? So so I would, I would say just say do not say. So majority say do not say the blessing over over the. Um, the telephone, right, or or computer, or, or like uh, if you have a Skype or something, right, uh, right. But the microphone is a little different. So if you're in a, in a hall, right, uh, and uh, and that person maybe I don't know he's uh, uh, fifteen feet from you, so t and he's a or she's uh, talking on the microphone. Technically, you can. Uh, you can hear them even without microphone because you're you're so close to that person. So maybe it's of course it's not going to be as uh, as clear and as loud as a, with a microphone, right? But but you you would be able to hear. So then you you are allowed to say the amen to that blessing. But if it's so like I don't know, fifty feet from you, hundred feet from you, so you would not be able to hear the, the blessing. So in this case, I would say just say don't say the the blessing because uh, same as a, with a telephone. This whatever you see, you hear from the speakers is not actually the person's voice. Okay. Okay, no problem. But uh, well, and, and the the third case in 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 recording it has nothing to do with the blessing. So this uh, this recording could be from five years from now. <laughs> and somebody somebody wants to drink some water. That that, that person say uh, the the blessing on the water. Well, does does it does it have to do with you? Five years later, nothing. Okay, so of course we do not respond the name. Okay, so I mean we, we only respond when somebody's live, uh, like live in face to face or as uh, face to face. All other, all other amends and all other th uh, when when somebody said that you are allowed, it's already questionable. You you, you enter this uh, zone that uh, uh, not everybody agree. And uh, I would say majority of the Paskim disagree. Okay, continue. Like uh, this con controversial issue that, that started when we had, uh, uh, during the, the pandemic, people tried to do this, uh, what is it, minyanim um, over the telephone, but it was, no, but they explained, no, it actually was uh, one minion. So 10 people were actually in the same room, um, like uh, maybe one, one extended family, right? Uh, ten, ten men, and uh, all others are allowed to, to, to hear. Some of them say you can answer kedusha. That's too much. We're trying to stick to basic Judaism, which is not so basic. Okay. So continue. 
um, last piece uh, in this section is uh, responding amen after making one's own bracha. It's well known that uh, once a person makes a bracha, she is not permitted to talk before uh, taking a bite of, of your food. Okay, so we, we're talking about blessing before the food. If one speaks words uh, not relevant to her eating, and she has not yet taken a bite, she must repeat the bracha. If one, ha uh, if one has already taken a bite, but has not yet swallowed any food, she should not talk. But if she does speak, she does not repeat the bl blessing. Okay, so let's uh, let's try to understand. So now, now we're talking about specific uh, scenario when some somebody uh, when when she makes a blessing, and and she going to eat or drink. I mean, eat. I, I would say eat. It is a is a better uh, better example, right? Why? I'm going to explain why. So, um, uh, halakhically, when when I say eating, it it means that uh, you. You have to swallow something, some like tiny piece of food you must swallow. Like uh, like even you have a, you, you put in, in your mouth like uh, I don't know, a big piece of bread. I don't know, don't put big, but whatever, uh, whatever piece of bread you put, unless you swallow like a few crumbs, but a little, even according to some poskim, even saliva with the taste of, uh, of your food, that's enough and you, you can uh, speak. But uh, according to the majority of the paskin, you, you must like swallow something, right? Otherwise, it's not considered to be eaten, and it's still almost, almost. It's not exactly, but almost like like you said before you ate. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, right? Uh, but 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 according to some paskin, since uh, uh, the food is already in in her mouth and, may, and maybe she already swallowed a little saliva so we said do not do not repeat the blessing because it might be the blessing in vain and uh, um, in in all of the cases of the doubt uh, when uh, halakha is a, a, is of rabbinical origin we do not repeat so if it's a rabbinical and it's a doubt we go leniently if it's a biblical halakha and it's doubt, we go into stringently and we do repeat. We do repeat or uh, do any other actions. Continue. The, um, this applies to saying Amen as well. So, I mean, in, uh, if, um, like, we always uh, ask, ask people just, uh, that just uh, be a little patient. Right? So, try to give give somebody a space. For, for, for example, um, uh, you and your friend needs uh, need to to say a blessing. Let let's say you're going to drink coffee. Okay, so uh, let's say she she goes first. Uh, she she say she uh, on her head with Roy, and she takes a sip. So let her swallow the, this little coffee. Do, do not uh, jump and say your own blessing. You understand? So let her swallow, and she can answer me. Don't don't put another person in questionable situation. Okay, so we finish that topic. I mean, um, any any questions on the main? Okay, very okay. No problem. So uh, next uh, uh, next topic also very interesting. I mean, we, we cover it extensively in uh, in Kitsu Shohanoru, but uh, here it's only pertaining to women. Okay, let's see what he says because it's very interesting. Okay, my machronim. The, the obligation. There is an obligation to wash one's hands, entire hand, before reciting Birchas Hamazon. After, uh, birchas, after the meal, that includes bread. This is called Ma'im Achranim, literally uh, after waters. Okay. So, uh, as, uh, as we learn in the Kitsur Shulchan Aruch, so in, uh, here also we learn that after washing, uh, after um, eating bread, so before eating bread, we, we, we finish that subject today, only the last year time we say so it's a um, um, that water uh, that that washing is called uh, in halacha maim uh, rishonim meaning the first waters and uh, after the blessing we call uh, they call it maim maim achranim achranim is uh, last waters uh, they they call it uh, uh, 
afterwards. Okay, last word is afterwards. That doesn't matter. Same, same thing. Okay. So how, how much we, we have to wash? Entire hand. Of course, as, 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 as we said, we, we don't wash uh, the entire hand. So we, I mean, it's, if you want to wash the entire hand, it's very commendable. But it's uh, if you uh, wash even fingers, right? That's also acceptable. So let's see. Uh, the reasons this is um, uh, this has two purposes first salt from the city of Sodom was used um, was used uh, when making bread and uh, for other parts of the meal if that salt were to enter one uh, the ice it could have harmful effect the common the commentaries know that this can mean either physical harm or a spiritual harm Right, it says Pele Yoets. That's one of the subjects that uh, one of the one of the books. Pele Yoets. Okay. So what does it what does it mean? So uh, they uh, they used to have uh, this uh, Sodom, uh, like so Sodom is it from Dead Sea, the, the salt from Dead Sea. But today, I mean, uh, it's it's very popular uh, for people to use uh, the sea salt. So, and many times you, you like you don't know from from which sea this uh, this salt came. It could be a, like even mixture, like some I don't know some percentage from the Dead Sea. It's a lot, a lot of salt there, right? Uh, so and uh, if if somebody touches his uh, his or her eyes, it can be harmful effect. And we said that if it's physical or spiritual, we do not know. Continue. Even regular salt might contain some of the type of harmful salt. Okay. Uh, we wash our hands to remove any salt that may uh, remain there. Second, we wash our hands in order to recite Birchaz Kamazon with pure holy hands. So two two reasons. One one is to is to wash our hands from uh, from uh, um, uh, from from this uh, harmful salt, and another one is just to make it pure. For, for example, some somebody was uh, know, handling chicken bones or something, right? So they they soil their hands. So now, uh, it, before before doing this biblical mitzvah or birchas hamazon, it's, so it's proper to uh, to purify your hands. Okay. Continue. Some poskim write that these two reasons do not apply in our time. Salt from the city of Sodom is no longer common. Okay, even though it's possible, no longer common. Also, our hands are frequently somewhat dirty, and therefore it is not considered lack of cleanliness or, or holiness to say Birchaz Hamazon without washing our hands beforehand. beforehand. Uh, just one second, let me read the second sentence one more time. So it says, also our hands are frequently somewhat dirty, and therefore it is not considered the lack of cleanliness or holiness to say Birchaz Hamazon without washing our hands beforehand. So he said uh, some some poskim say Shol Shol Hanorach actually. Okay, so salt is not common. I mean, maybe yes, maybe no, right? But percentage wise, and even if you ate uh, so so today we, we usually people eat with uh, forks and knives and uh, spoons and. Uh, not like all in olden days, okay, right? So even their door is they're not so dirty that it would be absolutely forbidden to say Birchaz Hamazon. So okay, so okay, we heard it. Nevertheless, one who knows that the hands are dirty and is um, disturbed by by this must wash his hands before reciting Birchaz Hamazon. Moreover, many Paskim write that one should still wash Maimachranim today because we might use salt that is similar to the salt of Sodom. In addition, there are Kabbalistic reasons to do so. So, I see Mishnah Vrura. Um, so, even though technically, technically, uh, it's not necessary. So, uh, uh, let, let's say you, whatever you ate was uh, with a fork and a knife and you like uh, with a napkin, whatever you were touching with a napkin, so your hands are absolutely clean. The, the, you, you did not touch any food that might contain salt and everything so even though they say after the fact so if if you some maybe your hands got dirty right or maybe 
uh, maybe it was sold, or maybe, according to the last opinion. So in addition, there are Kabbalistic reasons to do so. So uh, our strong uh, recommendation, always wash their hands uh, for women. So I know some people say don't, but uh, there is a problem with them also. Okay, continue, different problems with them. A woman's obligation. In many family, men scrupulous towards the Mai Mahanim, but women do not. Some poskim feel, feel that this neglect is incorrect. Since na nowhere does the halacha differentiate between men and women in this regard. So he's a very interesting, who said it? Okay, all right. So, um, <laughs> it's very interesting point. So I, I never saw this point before. Right? But uh, it's very interesting. So if, if you say it does not apply, okay, it does not apply to everybody. So, but if your husband is washing his hands, so, well, one second, uh, you, you, you were eating with a fork and a knife and a napkin, you didn't touch uh, whatever, whatever you, 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 your hands absolutely clean. So, so, so it's he, uh, his. So, but men, all of the men wash their hands. Unless they're lazy bums, right? So, but it's a different story. So, but uh, if, uh, as, as he said, there is no discussion that Paskim said that uh, women are not obligated, but men are. It's not true. Very interesting way. Okay, continue. However, the cast of many women do not wash my mahranim, uh, as the understanding is um, as noted that the main reasons for the mitzvah do not apply today. Although Paskim still encourage us to wash my mahranim, Women have not accepted that custom upon themselves since uh, it was based mainly in uh, in Kabbalah. Okay, but okay. So it's, one more time, some some women don't, but uh, like the most absorbent women do wash their hands, same as men, as we said. Okay, continue. Uh, speaking after washing my machranim, that's very interesting. One who does not wash my machranim, who da does wash, should not speak before reciting Birchas Hamzon. So it's like, uh, of course, you, you, you sing a song before the Listechilim, right? Before you, you start, it's not actually part of uh, Birchas Hamzon. Like, even though we do that, but it's not official uh, uh, man mandatory part. But when you, you wash your hands, that's it. You're ready to say Birchas Hamzon, so you keep quiet. So until uh, you keep quiet, until everybody wash their hands, and that's what we do. Okay. So continue. Very interesting. Just checking time. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to finish. Uh, any any questions on any topic? Okay. No questions. Uh, I don't know, so if, if, if no questions, so let, let's do, let's learn a little, maybe a few minutes extra. So the uh, topic is Zimun. So uh, that's actually what we um, cover covering now in, um, in kids' class. So obligation. When three men above the age of 13 eat bread meal together, they have an obligation to recite the formal invitation known as Zimun. Uh, which e each other, so three or more. When three women uh, over the age of 12 eat together, they are not obligated to do so. They are allowed to simply recite Birchaz Hamazon, each on her own. Although the, according to the strict halacha, three women are permitted to make zimun together, the overwhelming majority of the women do not have the custom to voluntarily do so. Okay, so I'm going to explain it now. Men and women do not combine to make a zimun. In other words, when um, when there are two men and one woman, uh, or uh, one man and two women, they do not consider a zimun. Okay, so zimun, as we said, three men uh, above age of 13. Okay, no problem. So women, you, uh, if they want, especially according to Ashkenazic tradition, so if uh, like uh, it's um, so the our our paskin say if if women want to voluntarily accept up upon the themselves some uh, some mitzvah the, there is no problem they they can do that and they're going to get reward of course of course this uh, reward is not going to 
be as great as men, but uh, I mean, uh, without crossing the line, they actually can do the zina. No problem. Okay, uh, do they obligate it? Absolutely not. So you, usually, for for example, if only two men uh, ate together and two, two men and uh, let's say kids and uh, uh, women, so everybody, um, usually, usually, like uh, everybody say the birchas hamazon for themselves, but in my house we have we have a uh, tradition. So uh, like in 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 some other houses also, as I know, so we say out loud. One one person says out loud, and but others of course they the same like quietly themselves. So it's not like he he's making a zimun, but uh, for everybody else who who is tired, do not know how to say elderly, whatever it doesn't matter. We just say it out loud. Consider, but uh, men and women do not combine to say make a zimun. Okay. Answering the zimun, however, when women eats bread, to, uh, bread meal together with three men over the age of thirteen, she is obligated to answer zimun. There is a, that's a different issue, well, another different diff different story. So they, uh, let's say, uh, a woman, uh, she, um, her husband and two grown grown up sons. Okay, they say the zimun, and she and the daughter smart. Uh, must replies to the zimun. There is no like no problem. She may not recite Birchas Kamazon without first hearing the zimun from uh, from the three men. So uh, as uh, as we will learn in the, the kids' class, so a man cannot separate themselves, right? So for example, two two men, uh, three men ate together, and two are still eating, and, and third said, you know, I have to go back, I have to go home. They said, no, no, he cannot separate. They must say the zimun. Together, so so same. Uh, it's very interesting. Same with they say story with uh, with a woman, right? She she must wait until uh, until they 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 going to say the zimun together, so she can answer. Uh, the woman answered the proper responses in uh, as printed in uh, in your siddur, right? Even if she does not understand the meaning of the words. So uh, as we said, if you if you answer. Um, in uh, Hebrew, there is you. You're not obligated to to understand the meaning of the words. If you answer in different language, which no nobody stopping you, you must understand what you're saying. So if you do not know that language, right? So you're not allowed to say. But if you you understand the language, you can answer in any language you want. No problem. Paskim write that uh, if woman has left uh, the table, the man must call her back to wait. Uh, and, and wait for, for them to return before may, uh, beginning the zim. So it's it's in a case when they ate together. Okay, so men are ready. Let's say husband and two sons are ready to say the, the blessing. So they call uh, women back. Uh, continue uh, last part. Reciting Birchas Hamazon. Anyone who is obligated in zim, a man or a woman, may not recite Birchas Hamazon without hearing answering and amen. Uh, answering the zimun first, right? So you have to, at, at least as, as we said, the, the first blessing. Therefore, a man wants to finish the meal earlier than the other diners, uh, he or she must uh, request that those continue the meal, make zimun uh, for them. Okay, you, you make zimun, you want to continue it, continue it, but uh, for us, make a zimun. Since a woman cannot be one of uh, one who leads the zimun, she must ask three uh, three of the men to make um, a mezuman for her, right? Because, because she 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 needs to go. Um, she may then recite birchas hamazon. So she's not allowed to birchas hamazon uh, recite until she hears uh, the zimun. But it's it's in a case when when they eat together. If they did not eat together, there is no zimun. I mean, she's not obligated to to join them. Let's say right. So she was on the women's side, and her husband, uh, and her brother, and her children were grown up sons on another side. There is no eating together. Unlike when um, unlike when men want to finish uh, want to finish, and she wants to continue, she uh, she must pause and answer the zimun. Until the end of the first uh, bracha, after that she may recite Birchas Hamazon when she fin uh, when she has finished the meal. Okay, there is no problem. So um, just uh, let me read one more time uh, the last sentence and restart. Likewise, when uh, the men want to finish, so 
they 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 want to finish Let, let's say it's a mother then she she was serving all of the food she just <laughs> sit, sat down to eat they've been eating for two two hours right <laughs> so <laughs> so they they want to finish she she wants to continue uh, she must pause answer the zimun until the end of the first blessing so she answered amen after that she may uh, recite her chazkamazon if she finish her meal or she can continue eating there is no problem you just don't ignore the blessing. Okay, we can stop here. It's very, 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 very interesting book, and all like, uh, like on one hand, uh, one hand it's condensed, but on another hand, all of the details are here. Very interesting. Okay, so we stop here. Any questions? Okay, no problem. So we stop here. So continue tomorrow with. Uh, our class kids are shocked. Good night.